Triple Zeker Triple 007, and in today's video for you guys, I got a pretty cool little hacking tutorial for you guys combining Kali Linux and USB Rubber Ducky. So at the end of this video, if you follow this video to its completion, you'll be able to plug in the USB Rubber Ducky, USB Rubber Ducky into any computer on the same Wi-Fi network and get remote CMD admin access. So it's a pretty cool tutorial, and with no further ado, let's get started. Um, but before I do, I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Nick, who uh, is an online friend of mine who I do some coding things with, um, play Rock League with. Uh, he was the one who actually wrote the Ducky script for this. So huge shout out to him um, for letting me borrow it for this video. So before I get started, I'll quickly talk about what you need in order to follow this video to its completion. The first thing you're going to need is obviously a USB driver Ducky. It's about $45 American if you don't already have one. It's a pretty fun little tool, little uh, stop stocking stuffer. It's a pretty cool little uh, thing. Basically what it is though, uh, TLDR is it's a flash drive looking like device, um, but it actually acts like a keyboard. So you plug it in and it will run scripts that you type or you that you code for it to type things out. The other thing you will need is Kali Linux. So Kali Linux is a free OS uh, used for like penetration testing. Uh, it's available online. I'll link in the description below. You can install it to your computer, but I do suggest installing it on a virtual machine, which is what I have set up in this video and is what I'll be using in this video. Now, I'm not going to really go over how to install Kali Linux. There's plenty of videos for that already, and this video will be long enough as it is. So you will need to have Kali Linux already installed and ready to go. So no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is confirm if you're using this virtual machine, what you want to do is head over to machine and go to settings. And just confirm under network that you're set up as a bridge adapter. If you're not set up as a bridge adapter, um, your virtual machine will not be getting its own IP address, which is what we need in this video. So make sure it's set as a bridge adapter. And then what we'll want to do is head over to uh, terminal in Kali and just go ahead and type in ifconfig. And what it'll do is give us our IP address information. Uh, what we need to find out is the INET address right here. So the INET address is the um, local IP address of this virtual machine on the network. So uh, take note of that. The next thing we're going to need to do is actually write the script for our ducky. So I'll have a link in the description below so you can copy it or you can pause the video and type it in yourself if you'd like. Um, but I will go through right now and just quickly explain what it's doing. So basically, um, it opens up Windows running command. It, in, it starts PowerShell as an admin. It then creates a directory, creates a script that downloads this file. So this file actually is, it's just a file, it's just a file hosting website with a file. And the file itself is um, this netcat download. So um, the netcat comes in a zip file with 64-bit and 32-bit versions. My friend Nick basically downloaded it and then just uploaded the 64-bit version to a website. And then it and then you just put a link there. So if you'd like, you could do it yourself and then change this link with your own link if you'd like. So, or you can leave it the same. Um, but in the future, if you're watching this video like a year later and this link doesn't work, then you will have to do it yourself. It then starts up um, the download that whatever downloads that the Unit can download there. It starts it passing over the um, IP address. Now this is the IP address of our Kali Linux machine. So make sure you uh, match it so that this matches the IP address in Kali Linux. So just confirm they match. They will probably not match by default. So make sure you change uh, most likely the last two numbers to match. So when I want to say that 217 and the same is here. This number here is the port number. Uh, you can leave this as default um, as long as this port isn't being used. So for 99% of you guys, this port is perfectly fine. If you'd like to change it though, you can change it. So it launches it and it exits command prompt and that's it. So what we need to do is make sure your IFP address is the same. And then once you you've understand the script and it is good to go, we'll have to make it into a ducky script. So to do that, we'll just make sure you have the encoder.jar file for ducky. If you have ducky, you probably know how to do this, but basically open up command, command window Java dash jar encoder jar I mid enter. There you go. It runs. It's perfectly good. 
So now what we do is we have this inject.bin file that we can put on the ducky. And then, so now all, all I have to do now is copy this file over to the ducky, and then I'm good to go. The last thing I have to do is in uh, Kali, I need to type in NC, which is starts which starts netcat dash LP, which um, tells what port to listen on, and two five five six seven, which is the port that is written in the ducky script. So if I change this number to something else, then I have to change the number in here as well. So when I type that in, press enter, what it'll do is it will start up netcat listing on that port. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys how the virus or how this attack works on my own personal laptop. All right, everybody. So now I'm uh, sitting at my laptop. So we're going to run this code on my laptop. So over here, I got uh, Kali Linux on the virtual machine. You can still see that it is empty. So now I'm going to take the rubber ducky, which currently has the script on it, plug it in, and you'll see what it's going to do. So let me just plug it in. Now we'll see over here, we actually have um, a pop-up and then it says Microsoft Windows version 10. And that is this laptop. And so now we actually have full admin rights, uh, command, command prompt wise, on this laptop from that Kali Linux machine. So now I'll show you guys, just, just for some proof, uh, if we go here and type in, um, if I help this slide, like who am I? You'll see that it has written Hayden, which is my computer name, and Hayden, which is my uh, account name on that laptop. And so for example, let's say we go like, uh, uh, let's say we do like mkdir hacked. So now we've created a folder called um, hacked. And so if we go over to the laptop where it's currently um, CD'd in, you'll see that there's a hacked folder created. Now what we'll do is we'll just create like a text file. So if we go like echo um, high greater than hacking dot, sorry, I tell with one hand guys. So type in like that, hit enter. You can see over here now on the text file, hacking has showed up. And if we open up hacking, So there you guys go, that is uh, pretty much the point of this video. We have successfully created a, uh, we have remote admin pro uh, privilege on this laptop uh, from the Ducky script. You know, it, it does work too, by the way, If you even if you unplug this, it still does work. Um, and it keeps that connection open until you close it over there. So that is a quick little example, guys, of what you guys can do with this. It is pretty damn neat. Um, like I said, you do have there are some, there are some like things you have to account for. For example, you have to have access to the lap the, to the device and be on the same network as it. Um, but that is pretty much it for this video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave those below as well. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching, and hope to see you guys in a future video. The Stacker Below Seven, and I'm signing off.